Gluten is a protein found in grains like wheat, rye, and barley. It can be bad news for your small intestine, maybe even cause cancer if you have gluten intolerance or celiac disease. This book, Fifty Shades of Grey, it is the hottest thing in publishing right now. And in case you haven't heard, it's pretty steamy. It's already being banned in public libraries in Georgia, Wisconsin, and Florida due to its controversial subject matter. Ever since the video went viral, it has been sweeping the nation. From the young to the young at heart are now using hooping as a form of exercise. I will tell you that I love you tonight. 15-year-old Hadassah Lewis loves to sing and draw. She also has type 2 diabetes. She was diagnosed when she was just 11 years old. I kind of felt bad because I, um, I thought it did something wrong and I didn't know if it could go away. And I was just like really confused. Dr. Andrew Muir compares the human body to a car to help explain type two diabetes. What happens is you have a faulty fuel line and even though you're making insulin, you can't get that insulin into the muscles. So you start to have a collection of fuel sitting in the gas tank or in your bloodstream, the glucose collects in your bloodstream and you get high levels of blood sugar. Type 2 diabetes used to be known as adult onset diabetes because it's most common amongst the middle aged and the elderly, but not anymore. There are more children now being diagnosed with adult onset or type 2 diabetes and there are more adults who are being diagnosed with type 1 or adult onset diabetes or childhood onset diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, approximately 30 million children and adults have diabetes in the United States. Out of that number, nearly 95 percent have type 2 diabetes. And Dr. Muir says controlling type 2 diabetes in kids isn't as successful as it is in adults. There's a very disappointing study for, uh, published in 2012 that shows that about half of kids who get type 2 diabetes need insulin or within about three, year, three to five years of diagnosis are going to need insulin, which is much sooner than, and much more common than we see in adults. For Hadassah, her treatment plan has become a family affair. She said her mom helped her find the motivation to change her lifestyle. She told me that I have to work hard at it and that we'll have to work on our food plan and our workout plan. And she just really helped me and helped me feel like I wasn't alone. I know it's possible for me to get rid of type 2 diabetes and every day I know all I have to do is do better than the day before. Every day she focuses on new ways to stay active and eat healthier. Her goal? To make type 2 diabetes a thing of her past. Jennifer Whalen, CNN, Atlanta. More Americans are taking dietary supplements, and according to a new study by federal health experts, many of them are ending up in the emergency department as a result. We studied records from 63 emergency departments from 2004 to 2013. The study was a collaboration between the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration, and the results were staggering. Researchers estimate that supplements are responsible for more than 23,000 emergency room visits every year, and roughly 10% of them were serious enough to require hospitalization. Dr. Andrew Geller was one of the authors of that study. He says prior to this study, very little was known about the safety of supplements. He says their findings revealed a pattern among who was receiving medical care and why. We found that uh, over a quarter of the people visiting the emergency room with uh, problems with dietary supplements were young adults. Um, these are people who are aged 20 to 34 years um, and most of those visits were for problems from dietary supplements for weight loss or, or energy. And we found that over a fifth, that's over 20 percent of the visits were made by young children who had gotten into supplements intended for somebody else. And finally, while older adults were less commonly coming to the emergency room for problems with dietary supplements, when they did come, over a third of them had s some sort of swallowing problem, like choking on a supplement pill. Dietary supplements in the United States don't require safety testing or FDA approval before they're sold or marketed. And unlike prescription drugs, dietary supplements are considered safe until proven otherwise. But the nutritional supplement industry insists the majority of their products are safe, and the study's results are being overblown. 
Naturopathic physician Dr. Brad Bongiovanni admits that the supplement industry is a little bit like the Wild West. He regularly advises his patients about supplements, and he thinks the study could be misleading. The headline, 23,000 you know, uh, emergency room visits per year caused by dietary supplements, is like, wow, uh, that sounds like a lot. But relatively speaking, it's less than 5% of all emergency room visits. So if you think of 166 uh, million Americans who take supplements every year and less than 5% end up in the emergency room because of adverse events, the take home really is supplements are very, very, very safe. But researchers think that 23,000 ER visits is most likely an underestimate. Dr. Geller advises everyone to take precautions with these products. For all consumers of supplements, uh, we encourage uh, you to report to your doctor that you're taking supplements and to keep, store your supplements as you would medications up and away and out of sight of young children. Dr. Geller says more research needs to be done to find out how to reduce the amount of ER visits due to supplements and to better ensure their safety. Jennifer Whalen, CNN, Atlanta. Hula hoops aren't just for kids anymore, now known as hooping. It's a workout trend that is catching on. Jennifer Whalen has the details. It's the Shoop Shoop Hula Hoop. More than 50 years ago, Elvis and the Beatles rocked the music scene and hula hoops dominated the international toy market. At the height of the hula hoop craze, the toy company Whammo sold about 25 million hoops within the first four months. In the decades that followed, the toy's popularity tapered off until recently. It seems like the more that our people are doing it now because the hooping community has just like exploded. There is a global hoop dance movement going on and people are of all different ages and from all different walks of life are coming together through this circle. Over the last few years, this hooping movement has evolved into a form of fitness. In 2011, the American Council on Exercise did a study on what the benefits of hooping are, if any, and what they found was promising. Researchers found that hooping for 30 minutes can burn up to 210 calories or about 420 calories an hour. This means that a hooping workout rivals boot camp style classes, step aerobics, and cardio kickboxing. And for those looking to take this simple workout to the next level, the Mayo Clinic says weighted hoops are a good option. There's like two kinds of hooping. There's like core body hooping, which is like you know, chest, stomach, legs, and then there's off body hooping, which is like the spinning it around with your hands and stuff like that. Rachel Lust knows a lot about hooping. She won the 2014 Hoopy Award for Female Hooper of the Year, and three of her hoop dance YouTube videos went viral. Ever since the video went viral, it has been sweeping the nation from the young to the young at heart are now using hooping as a form of exercise. It's just not just a physical body thing. It's an internal thing for some people too. A lot of people meditate. And when I had my time alone with the hoop, it was like I was feeling my, you know, my emotions and my inner soul. I was giving back and I was just happier. Hula hoop backers are teaching the meditative and fitness benefits of hula hooping at workshops around the world. I know that there's a lot of people in the UK and Bristol is a, a big spot for that. Australia, there's people in Melbourne and Sydney doing it. They're really all over the place. Even celebrities are joining the hooping movement, including Marissa Tomei and Shaquille O'Neal. And even First Lady Michelle Obama is a fan. Who knows, these workshops could be rolling into your neighborhood, Jim, very soon. By the end of this year, Dunkin' Donuts plans to have two gluten-free products on its menu. Krispy Kreme says they're not far behind. Nutritionist Marlisa Brown says gluten-free products are springing up everywhere. They have beer and they have bagels and they have cake and cookies and pies and restaurants have it on their menu. This is great because anybody that was gluten-free before, they couldn't live like everybody else. Brown has written several gluten-free cookbooks and she says she herself is living with gluten intolerance. Gluten is a protein found in grains like wheat, rye, and barley. It can be bad news for your small intestine, maybe even cause cancer if you have gluten intolerance or celiac disease. Celiac disease has been around a while, I mean a really long while, but the last five years they've been getting better at diagnosing it and they've been able to find out who has it and who doesn't. 
About 1% of the population has celiac disease, but the estimates of those gluten intolerant range from 6 up to 50%. It could be a big commercial market. Gluten-free celiac is about 10% of our clientele, so we take it very seriously. So in Atlanta, Yale Burger has gluten-free items on its menu. You can get anything here from gluten-free onion rings to gluten-free fried chicken. And at Colorado Rockies games, you can find gluten-free hot dogs. Outspoken celebrities like Miley Cyrus and Gwyneth Paltrow, who advocate the health benefits of going gluten-free, contribute to the fact gluten-free foods ranked second on Time Magazine's top 10 food trends of 2012. But can it be a good idea for everyone? I do think people can feel better, uh, but that feeling better is probably eating better. Dr. Larry Sperling is an Emory University heart specialist who is on a panel that examines popular diets. He's skeptical about gluten-free's value if you don't have the disease. Being more aware of processed foods, limiting carbohydrates that have no high nutritional value, and also, in general, when people lose weight, a lot of health concerns improve. But it's become so popular, some are even taking the gluten-free craze beyond food. But a gluten-free dating site? It could be the start of a healthy romance or another fad that sells until the next one comes along. Jennifer Whalen, CNN, Atlanta.